I've done it again. I've again spent many hours on building a super realistic build. This time we are going to look at it with some real-time parts, time lapses and eventual animations. Be prepared for another hyper-realistic thing that went a little bit overboard, but more about that in today's build, let's start with the first real-time part. So as said in the intro, we are approaching things a little bit differently in today's build. We are starting with step zero, the preparation phase. And you can tell I opened up uh, this area over here towards the very new area in which the Reptile House is gonna sit. So every first step in uh, building and planning in Planet Zoo is kind of trying to tie something into your build. So this is where we made our last wonderful realistic habitat, the Sea Otter one, which I'm uh, still uh, loving to bits. But uh, this entire thing just uh, makes so much fun that I wanted to breach out into a completely new area now. And I really, I, I hesitated to put it here. Um, I also debated with myself to put it down here. However, I didn't want to close in too much to the border of the map. I wanted to give me some more space to branch out into the park to make it just a bit more, you know, breathing and a bit more, give it a bit more air, you know, to put some plants around. That's the reason why I got to put it over here. And also, I open up two areas now because uh, usually uh, you can go via the Oceania area uh, through the Oceania area and then you will be left out over here which is going to give you some very cool looks to the reptile house from this side but then again there's also going to be this tiny little pathway over here so you know if you're done with the sea lion show or sea lion uh, area education area um, you'll you get the choice, you know, to go either into Oceania or you're going to breach out to the right side and go into the Reptile House. So what have I done? Um, it's basically just figuring out the base layout. And uh, from now on, the next step is going to uh, fiddle around with which habitat is going to sit, um, you know, in which area. You already have seen a teaser of how it's going to go. I don't uh, at this point in time. And um, I have some thought I want to share with you before we go into the next building bit. Um... So, you know, my idea from the beginning was to have this raised area for people to walk over to see some of the crocs and so on down there, but also to give space for some uh, of the exhibits that we clearly have. And I also want to incorporate at least one more of the uh, tortoise, um, tortoises in here. So I'm not in exactly sure where we're going to fit them, but I have certain ideas in my mind how to approach that. And so uh, I will need to, to figure out exactly where things sit the best way. And uh, this is going to be what's happening next. And as 40 plus hours obviously cannot all go into one video, I needed to bit, uh, do a bit of a cut here and go straight forward to building the pools for our wonderful crocodiles and alligators that come in here later. However, uh, the main question was where to fit, uh, fit in the uh, tortoises and stuff. So what I decided to go for is, as you've seen maybe at the very beginning of the time lapse, there is an elevated habitat in the center, which is on ground level, if you will. So once you're approaching the reptile house, you'll be able to walk in straight on ground level and you'll be greeted by the vista of a very high building that goes even higher because the lowest part of the building is lower so we can even fit some very big trees in here that's a very common trick that you know greenhouses and, and reptile houses and zoos use uh, in order to fit some bigger trees that are a lot more you know needed and and also local to the animals that are held in there um, and it gives the whole thing a bit more perspective and size so I decided to go for uh, this approach with the lowered area Area, the lower main area but in the center we have a raised area for the tortoises which um, to be honest is going to turn out very nice because at the very end of this build you'll see how this area now also incorporates all the small exhibits uh, below and that's kind of really feels like the needed kind of structure in this building because otherwise we wouldn't have really a structure to fit in all the facilities and stuff like that so um from not knowing where to put it, I ended up having this wonderful uh, raised area uh, becoming the central element of our build and also the central element of the logistics. And I personally think this was one of the best decisions I could have made and so I'm very happy. Uh, speaking of decisions, it was kind of a hard decision where to put the pools. I'm very happy with the final location of them, the one being a little bit uh, to the back of the habitat, so you can see the uh, the animals go there in the background a little bit. It's not really a background because these habitats are not super big, you know, as these alligators and crocodiles don't really need that much space as they are most likely floating in the water anyways. Um, and this is the reason why, and so the other one is very close to the pathway, but we need to continue with the next part. 
All right, so we are here with step number two, and it's gonna eventually make all sense to you uh, in a bit, but you've already seen some of the animations, so you may have already seen where I'm going with this. But just to give you a bit of an explanation what has happened, um, I slowly figured out where I wanted to put stuff, and I it, it still looks all a bit odd and wobbly and whatnot, but um, there's, a, there's a real thought behind this. So you can see both of the pools are in place now. Um, I'm not going to go for an underwater view in this build specifically because, you know, that, that would cause some major issues even more now uh, so that I have to, you know, I could have gone to this site maybe to bring people over here to, to stand here and see them dive, but um, to make the crocs dive that should eventually go in here, you should need to go super deep and I don't know, it, it, it just kind of doesn't feel right. But what I did is I made sure that both of these pools have like uh, absolutely perfectly fitting water as you can tell over here. Um, and for, for the sake of uh, keeping that real, I'm gonna like, leave them in to not destroy anything about the terraforming. Um, that is like a little trick. If you do something like this, you will eventually need to get out and in the water. But um, as long as you build around and you haven't laid down all the pathing path and stuff like that, keep the freaking water inside because that will keep the water in and keep the terraforming that is required to keep the water in. Else you would need to build this whole barrier thing around and it might actually look a little bit odd. Then we have some of the exhibits already in place, um, which may not uh, stay here exactly the way they do right now. I just put them in so that I have a you know general idea. But what is really important about these things is that I have this uh, upper layer in which we have another habitat. This is exactly where the um, tortoises will go. And I haven't fully decided if I can, and this is the this is the hardest part I have to still figure out if I will be able to bring that in. Um, I still thought it would be so cool to have the butterflies in here too. And I have an idea how this could be doable, but I still need to figure out if that's gonna work. So, um, I, you know, I don't even know. I th we, can, we can actually do this quickly to together. Um, no, future Rudy says absolutely freaking no. Because uh, I did this with you together, but then I figured the video will be even longer, and so I decided to turn this eventually into a time lapse so future Rudy can tell you if it worked or not. Uh, fortunately, I can say it worked, and I feel like it, the incorporation of this um, exhibit is super, super cool the walkthrough exhibit. I would have loved to maybe have another one in here too, but at the end of the day, I could have easily put the, the other one on the opposite side uh, above the other pool we have, but I tried this later on during the build, but I felt like it's not it's not adding anything to it because it literally is just another area for the butterflies. And it just again showed me, as much as I love the fact that we have the walkthrough uh, habitats and the interaction of the guest with the uh, with the butterflies, which is still very cool, and I would love to have this way more in the game, but th the main feature is I don't even know if I wouldn't be mad if the butterflies instead would have been very cool VFX effects. I mean, uh, hear me out, okay? It, it is a bit weird because, like with the walkthrough exhibit, we surely have another fine thing for the game, which totally makes sense in a way of having the species in and being able to have some education boards about this and have like you know have this as a part of the, the game but on the other hand i would have loved to just get a vfx that acts like an animal and acts like a uh, edible item to to your area so i don't know because the reason why i say this is now you have this box which is the walkthrough exhibit and you need to place the box in order to have the butterflies fly around but they will eventually only fly around in this one box so whenever you put down a box you will eventually always have this center pathway going on there so i could have done the little trick with free build and just make the path invisible by using the null path and just do not connect the path to uh, the rest of the habitat uh, the builds and then it would have easily worked you know i could have even put them into the croc habitats because literally uh, they ignore the whole build. It's basically not solid for them and they just walk through. That would have worked, but I kind of felt bad in doing so. And at the end, I thought, you know what, this is not the right way of doing it. I need to I need to do this as like a proper integration of the butterflies. And oh my God, are they popular? Like the whole, as soon as I opened uh, this, this area up for the guests, they were storming in here. But we need to talk about something else, and that is my obsession with realism in this specific case. I must admit, I didn't go as much beyond and above as with the last build. If you haven't seen the last build and you clicked into this video, I highly recommend to stop the video now and go to my sea otter build I did last time. This 
took even longer than this build and is even greater when it comes to the final animation. It looks absolutely sick and I would have loved to do this again, but oh my god, I needed time to live, okay? So <laughs> there was a little bit of, I, I didn't plan that this is going to go so crazy again. But I wanted to at least do a little bit of a pumping uh, work down here. So it's the actual pump that functions as the pump in the game to keep the water clean. Uh, but I wanted to have a waterfall that feeds in the water of the two pools so that there is at least a little bit of movement in here to avoid the water becoming green and, and muddy and, and stinky, you know. Um, so to have like a little bit of an airflow going in here and therefore we have this a facility and you can see I even made this into a uh, you know fake facility like Im implied realistic one so that uh, the staff members can actually get in here and it will be connected to the actual staff area that is behind the wall in kind of in the basement of this entire area which then is the connection piece to the uh, both big habitats to the left and right so it turned out super cool and I'm loving it and you'll see that in the end uh, in the real time part in the walkthrough how great that turned out you can see there is the pipe that pumps the water to the waterfall and then everything is dribbling down into the two areas it looks really really cool and I I love the fact that I incorporated this so early on because that that will show um, how it in the end turned out to be a a vital part of this entire build so i am so so happy how this turned out and i hope this gives you inspiration for your very own builds if you build like interiors and and you need some water flow that you have some pumping work going on i know people have done some crazy work but if you look at if you look at some actual indoor section sometimes in in real zoos you can even see the pipe work going um, below the ceiling where they pump the water from a to b because in these houses literally you have a lot of humidity going on for the animals and um, that's very important so you need some water flow and then I started, you know, putting around all these wonderful, wonderful fake rock pieces because we will need them a lot in this building. This time around, I didn't do the scaffolding and stuff in them. Uh, I did this, but I completely left it out now. It just took so long and I wanted to go on. And let me talk about the this in the next um, time-lapse part a little bit more, why I didn't do this. But I have one more real-time part for you to give you a little bit of a um, showcase of how it looks after the main work, the main planning work was done. Alright, so this is actually the last uh, real-time bit I'm gonna take you with before the final walkthrough. So, uh, as you can see, a couple of things have happened. Not that many in your eyes, maybe, but trust me, for me, a lot has happened. So I've finally ironed out how everything ties together. So, we do have the wonderful butterfly thing I talked about in the last real-time part. Uh, briefly, mm, this is going to be like a little bit of a hanging bridge kind of style, as you will see this in the final design. And then over here, I will also have to see how I'm going to make this. I have a certain idea about the design overall, but um, yeah, this has to. F I have to figure out how exactly that looks. But um, when it comes to the overall design of the house, you may actually be a little bit surprised to how it turns out. I mean, you've potentially seen it on the thumbnail anyways, but... Yeah, I've, I've got some ideas and I have to play around with this, how it's going to turn out in the end, but I'm very excited to showcase the final one. So all I'm left to do is now do the finishing work. Well, finishing is kind of, I, I'm going to do the biggest chunk now, simply because this planning uh, is taking up a bit of time, but now the most of the time goes into the fin finishing the product. So let's do that. All right, so this part is going to be the most exciting one for me personally, to give you uh, as much information and as much inspiration as I possibly can because this usually is the part of the video which is the biggest fun um, after all the hard work that has been done. Now it may seem as if this is the biggest chunk of the video, however this is by far not the biggest chunk. So everything you see on screen now is the result of hours of planning, of moving around, of finding the right spaces, of testing the right uh, proportions and all these kind of things. You know, mostly what you see on screen now is really using out my plan that I have already sculpted, you know. And for, for you, if you do certain projects, don't fall into the same trap that I have fallen into many, many times before. And this is by just keep going without planning ahead and just trying to build around what you have set yourself as a goal. Because it will eventually catch you up uh, later on and um, specifically when it comes about uh, right sizes and so on. So I obviously I checked how many space is necessary to make a traversable area for the crocodiles because as you know they have quite a ridiculous uh, traversable area just in general. 
I also checked if all the staff members can access everything, making sure that the pathing has been laid out first. I checked out if the height of my uh, terrain is high enough in order to make sure that despite having uh, free build, everything is working and people can actually move below without getting stuck and so on and so forth. And after I've done all of that, I could finally start doing the habitats. And yes, this is by far the fastest you can do, you know, uh, building these things over here is relatively simple when you have already settled for a style. And I already had a quite quite an obvious style in my mind. Uh, this time around, I checked again a couple of images from Zoot Chat. I keep repeating myself, but if you guys lack inspiration, Zoo Chat is absolutely mandatory. It is a huge forum for zoo enthusiasts who do not only share info about zoos, but they also share a lot of, uh, you know, images and stuff. Personally, I find it easier to type in my search request on Google and then add the wording zoo chat to it as one word. So don't do zoo and chat, put in zoo chat because the website is called literally zoochat.com, I guess it is. Um, and it's way easier than going to the website itself and then searching for the different habitats because on Google image search, you will greet it with a lot of these images you're looking for right away. And then you can... If you want, go into the forum and check out more images, but most of the times I, I find the ones that I need. And then I put them into a folder, zoom in the best I can so I can see all the miniature uh, pictures like the thumbnails. And then I have like a, a inspiration wall next to me on my second screen, which I keep looking at, finding around which little things I can do to make it again a bit more realistic and stuff like that. And yeah, speaking about realistic. Now, as you know, this is my realistic zoo, but uh, then again, it is the realistic one. See, I've talked about this so many times and I want to quickly um, put this in perspective now. So this entire build over here has kept me busy for almost three weeks now and I spend almost 41 hours into everything in total. That includes the research, that includes cutting and uploading and doing the thumbnails and blah blah blah. However, it, the pure playtime is well over 30 hours and you know, if you put that to three weeks, it's 10 hours a week, which for me personally is a lot. So this has been my main project for the last three weeks. Every single evening that I could offer a little bit of time or spend a little bit of time, I have spent in this project. And it still isn't anywhere near to the standards of realism that you will potentially see with LiDAR and most likely the people from Bro Nation, for example, because they add one more level of realism that... I, I still feel like it's absolutely bonkers if you look at it, but it, for me personally, it doesn't really add that much more to it to make the project so much better. Because for this level that these people in Bronation or Lighter or sometimes also Caesar is bringing in is another 40 hours of time for another maybe 5% of of quality over 95 that we've achieved already. So my goal in this park is going for the 90 to 95 percent of quality with the realism aspect in here. So just to put that in perspective, okay? But then again, obviously my target is that everything feels super realistic and is as if this could be built exactly this way in real life. I'm super, super happy with how this all turned out over here. We have this like cozy seating area you've just seen a second ago um, where some of the benches are hidden underneath the full rock. And I should also say that full rock has been my best friend in this build. And it shows me again how much I'd love to get more versatile pieces from the full rocks. I mean, I've grown to love them because they are so versatile in general already. But as much as I love them, I'm also getting tired of them in a way. And you just can't do the same with the existing rocks because Frontier has done an absolutely great job at making textures to stones that are actually looking like stones and not like fake stones. And they have done fake stones to make fake stones, you know what I mean? And I think this is exactly the thing. You don't want to pretend rocks are fake when Frontier has done such a great job at making them realistic. There is just no point in doing that and this way I feel like it's important to you know focus on on this aspect and that that's well the result of that is that I have to use the full rock pieces as what they're intended to and if you know me already for a while you know that I hate using pieces the way they are intended to be used. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, I love to abuse pieces and and use them in a different way, uh, which I can't do because well, there's well I could do my very own rocks and stuff, but then my frame rate would be even even worse. So let's not do that. But yeah, uh, I spoke about a lot about the usage here, but now I want to speak about the general feeling of this. Um, of this reptile house. Now, what we do have in here, we have like the um, uh, the water monitor in here. We've got the Galapagos uh, tortoise going in that central thing, thing over here, and we are also going to have uh, the saltwater crocodile as well as the alligator, and then alongside a lot of small exhibit animals. I um, do have to admit that I wanted to go for a bit of a more open and spacious feeling over too much of an cramped in and you know in indoor feel um this is why i decided to go with a huge dome feeling to it so we will have like a huge glass dome on top of this building rather than a proper house so it isn't necessarily a reptile house it's kind of a reptile dome i don't know if i may even change the naming for the title of the video uh, the thing is called reptile house as in the naming of the building itself but this could also be part of the reason that this used to be a reptile house maybe in the past and they have completely redone it into a modern dome kind of thing. This is also the explanation why we are having a mixture of a modern and a very classic city zoo vibe to the entrance. I definitely wanted to do this intentionally, having this um, kind of split and, and contrast between the super modern glass appeal that you see in so many zoos nowadays versus the very old brick kind of red-ish uh, with like uh, copper roof style and I'm I'm very I'm very very happy with how this all turned out I just can't say anything bad about this because there were so many challenges I needed to overcome specifically when it comes to these wraith raised paths over here oh my god such a uh, it's such a nasty thing to to work with these paths and then also hiding uh, these curbings. I mean, I did use the trick of uh, making this raised area, um, uh, you know, invisible with the null path. And don't worry if you don't use free build, you can't do it. So don't be shocked if I use a uh, null path and then everything is gone. I have no idea how why they can do it and why Frontier couldn't do it on on their own, but. Yeah, it is such a great thing to be able to hide the path if it's raised, because then you are getting finally rid of this curb and you can uh, detail this a little bit nicer. Here you can see already um, a huge, a huge step forward, because at some point I stopped recording, because you would have gotten dizzy and maybe even get a headache from all the building. It took so many hours and so many nitty gritty little details that I checked back my recording and even I got dizzy from it and I was like okay I definitely not gonna include this uh, so I made a huge step forward around like six hours or seven hours of a jump um, I was finished with the interior mostly and I started doing the uh, exterior work over here and this is exactly the contrast I was talking about uh, this is also a tip for you guys if you want to do buildings a little bit more interesting uh, try to mix up styles, you know, go for a uh, modern style first and add some old things to it and then just pretend that this building has been maybe added to it later on, like the modern part or vice versa, or, or just try to go for different styles, you know, uh, use like a Bauhaus style and mix this with a Romanesque style, for example, something like that also works pretty well together. And then again, you can also just check in some some zoo buildings, how they start. Sometimes they even do like a theme park trick uh, nowadays where they have like a very bare bone, very typical zoo style building and they just have the front facade um, done in a different style. You know, sometimes they just go in and make pretend that this is like an Asian building, but in fact, it's just like the front, the facade is looking Asian, but the rest of it is pretty normal, just like for functionality reasons. And Stuff like that is really helping and selling your idea. So I really hope that you find this helpful. And yeah, as you can see over here, I was doing some finishing touches uh, using my um, huge support structure over here in order to cover up some of the ugly little edges with the with the glass panels. And then just making look everything super clean and, and making sure that the corners fit together and all these kind of things. Um, you will see that the whole building is a little offset, but that was that was also intentional to make it look a tiny bit more interesting. Uh, it's not fully centered. There is like, I think, four meter of a difference on both sides just to just to give that this little shift, you know, so it, it makes the whole building 
uh, more interesting looking uh, with, with this very subtle trick of not making it centered and then on the back side we have this thing centered. So there's like a little off center that, that helps to make it feel just a lot more natural and less stiff I should say. Um, and also by having this back side over here being even bigger than the front with like a lower roofing as you can see over here. Um, it's also typical for areas that you need to keep a little bit bigger to buy yourself some more room and so the back of this thing of the dome is not completely straight cut off it actually has like a triangular edge to it but yeah this should be it from the uh, time lapse rudy it's now time to jump with you into the real time part and that one is going to be quite long and i'm going to show you a lot of details so enjoy that this is a wonderful fantastic tour and the animals were actually pretty pretty nice to us in uh, showcasing themselves and uh, stick around because at the end of the video there will be also some fantastic some fantastic fantastic uh, cinematics so so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed my voiceover so far, but there's so much more to see, so uh, don't leave just yet. Jump over to the real-time Rudy now. Okay, and here we are finally in the real-time part with a first big look onto this wonderful reptile house here. But you want to see it from the inside, you want to see it finished, and we are losing no more time but actually going in, and I am so proud. Honestly, a big chunk of the building is missing in the time lapse just to give you a bit of an excitement this time for the tour um, this is gonna be a big one so uh, from the very first beginning on I wanted to achieve something uh, I haven't really done in that sense and this is a huge reptile house with different layers with a lot of different things huge realism uh, you can see there's like a little snake body hidden in here to the left hand side and we also do have an elevator um, and the elevator is obviously for disabled people people with a, a wheelchair with strollers like people with kids or even just elderly people who need a wheelchair or maybe this kind of uh, walking uh, stuff and they can't really take the stairs i thought about a ramp but honestly uh, incorporating a ramp in here would have taken away quite a lot of uh, space and I, I had a couple of design ideas how to do it, like to make the ramp part of the design, but I um, decided against it this time for simple reasons. I just liked the design I went for with the elevator. And so um, on the left hand side there is a staircase in case you want to need uh, use this. It's going to go down in here with a couple of stones to the side. It's not like the most beautiful one, it's like a very functional one. And then to the right hand side there is the elevator and you can also tell there is a bit of a building down there. Now as you go in and the first thing we do is we can have a look at our uh, giant Galapagos tortoise and Ah, they are so freaking awesome having them in here in the center. They have a good time, you know, strolling around in their little habitat in the center of this build. And if you move around, you can also have a glimpse into the lower habitats, which is the American alligator. On this side, you can even see one chilling there, uh, sticking its head into its pool. And there's the other one on the other side, just having a good time. You can see them from above, but obviously, you can also see them from down here, which is where we're going in a second. You can see everything on top is very clean, very open. Um, there are a couple of little things missing I need to add, but these things I just noticed uh, very shortly. And as I have some other duties to do, I couldn't spend even more hours in here now. I already spent a couple of dramatic hours. Can you stop doing that? Uh, a couple of dramatic hours, like 40 hours or so on this build. And I did not plan to do that. But anyhow, on this side over here, we have our wonderful waterfall element, which I'm very proud of. It looks super cool, super natural. It all dips down into the two areas, give them the water for the water bottoms, a bit of style. We even have like this little... Um, kind of space in which the waterfall is incorporated because all the pipe work that goes behind there, which I actually did uh, for reasons of realism. And then once you go around, you have this little uh, open area, almost like in, an, uh, in like a gallery or something like that, where you have this inner part, like a hole in which you can look through. And then if we go to the right hand side, this is the uh, water monitor habitat, which is also fit in here with their shelter in the background there. And if you go there, look, we can even spot one coming out of the pool right now and the other one being right in front of us. I think this is looking really, really cool. You know, they have their little pool there in which they can go for a chill little swim as they seem to do just for us right now. Look at that. This is fantastic. Um, that looks super cool. Look at that. Now they go for a swim, both of them. Ah, that is so good. Yeah, as I already said, um, I, I needed to go for the trade-off this time around that we will have no 
uh, and a lot of viewing. I, I just thought that, you know, this is the way to go. I, I, there is no particular reason to that, but it's, I, I have tested so many things in before and I thought, you know, this time around, I, I just can't do it um, because it wouldn't fit in the build. But that shouldn't say, you know, we do it in the future. But something I'm very proud of is also this uh, raised area with our butterflies over here. I thought, yeah, like, in a reptile house like that, you quite often have this as well incorporated. There are technically no reptiles, obviously. However, I think it fits super well in. And, and going over this uh, hanging bridge type of build over here, you don't feel like as if you're uh, high up in the air, but you are. And once you look down here, you have this wonderful look into... Uh, this wonderful croc area ah just doesn't that look fantastic i really really like that you don't feel like as you're above because this area is slightly raised and then you're just one step lower and then you can see also look at the waterfall here in the background doesn't that look fantastic i really really like how this all looks and like with the sun coming in oh we even have like a baby look at that there are some babies already in there so cool um, and we obviously have a lot of butterflies going around. That looks so cool. That gives the whole thing so much vibe, so much uh, atmosphere in here. Really do like that. So, yeah. Once we've uh, spent our time on the upper area, we surely want to go down. And therefore, we're going to take the elevator real quick. So, we're just going to go here. You can have a look around. And then... Go down and boom. There we go. We arrive downstairs and uh, this is where the fun begins because down here we obviously have some more views into the two bigger alligator and crocodile sword walk or cro uh, crocodile habitats which I think they are the biggest uh, of them all. And then once you go through here you first of all have this very nice vista to the top layer. I think it this time around proportions are really nailed. I think the sizes fit absolutely how it could be in real life. Maybe it's a tad bit too high but considering we also need all these little um small exhibits in here it all makes sense but then you also have like a little shop area nothing fancy you can just grab a drink or something to eat uh, this shouldn't be the star of the show i just thought it would be nice to have it here and then you also sneakily um squeezed into this corner is like a toilet area it's super nice uh, to you know if you don't need to go for a pee <laughs> you don't need to go somewhere else and then obviously in here we have some more little friends. Look at that. There's like a, the Herman's tortoise in here. We have the Gila monster or Gila monster. I have no idea of the English pronunciation. Sometimes it's Gila, sometimes it's Gila. I, you know, it's, it doesn't make any sense. The language doesn't make any sense, but here you go. Look at that. There is an alligator swimming by just to showcase for us. We are very lucky now with the positioning of the animal. It's super nice. Let's see if that continues here with the small ones. Oh yeah, it actually does. Look at that. Right in front of us there is like an axolotl. Uh, oh no, this is the lynch, the, the, new, oh, it's the, the, the noob crest thingy. Yeah, I think that's that. And then in here we also have even more tortoise. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. I like that so, so much. Look, there's even one in here in the center. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Yeah, as you said, as I said in the past, this is like, you know, I can't, it's it's nice, but these small exhibits are not my bestest friends in the world. So, yeah, then we also have this cozy area where you can sit down and relax a little. This is like you have this wonderful waterfall in your view. There is like a backstage access if you need this uh, to go to the pipework and uh, to the staff areas. In the back, there is the connection to the two habitats. Um, so it's realistically done, you know, even have, let me show that to you. I mean, this is kind of a mad thing down here. You need to go through that. But um, if you enter here, there is the gate, you know, you go through here. And this is actually where the path is, leads you into the backstage area. And then both habitats are literally connected by this uh, area down here. So it's, it's, I went this little extra mile, okay? Um, it's not like super nicely designed, but for what reason would it be? And then over here you have like this tiny, oh my god, look at that, there is even the crocodile just passing by, so cool. This is like a little kid's corner in which they can have a nice look. And then you go around and you even have more uh, small exhibits to have a look into. We've got the um, boa in here and then on the other hand, I think this is where the anaconda is, yeah, the yellow anaconda with a albino version of it too. And then, oh, look at how the sun is just... Ah, streaming in here. I just think this looks fantastic. I, I really like this. Sometimes I don't really nail the lighting in this game, but I do... Oh my god, look look at this. We need to... So Sorry, but I need to just kind of get a little shot of this area. This looks, this looks way too good. Maybe this is going to be the thumbnail. Oh, that looks... 
that looks oh my god look at that we even have this little one here in the front oh that looks wow i'm blown away this is way too good this is what this could literally become my uh my thumbnail because that is that that's sparking exactly the the feeling i wanted to translate here with the with the house and with the whole reptile house yeah that looks that looks cool that looks really cool let's see if that one swims a little bit closer to us so we can maybe take even a better one so you can see this croc a little bit nicer let's see that the tail wiggle there you go and we're just gonna do that again with this one a little bit more in yeah now that makes sense that makes a lot of sense and that looks that looks really 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 cool really 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 lovely okay sorry i got carried away by my own awe i'm just being so much in awe <laughs> maybe we also make like a split screen on the one hand side this shot and then on the right hand side the the shot from the outside i don't know i have no idea about the thumbnail i should start doing this you know the professionals do that they have a thumbnail in mind before they do the build but i i just build because i love love building and then i just get carried away and spend 40 hours building a building like this for no reason other than I just like doing this. Anyhow, if you continue going, that's even not all, you know. There is someone has stick in its head. What is behind here? Oh my god. You can literally just walk around the corner and have a way better view, my friend. Uh, because over here, you can see there are even more in here. I'm not sure where's living, who's living in that one. Yeah. Someone might actually be in here. Or well, whatever. And then on this... Uh, oh, this is the iguanas. This is the lesser until in iguana. And that is the green iguana for sure in that one. Uh, can we spot more? Yeah, look at that, right in our face. How did I even miss out on this one? Hello, how are you doing? You spending a bit of time in the water? Okay, nice nice to see you here. Okay, but this one uh, is living its best life here. And the other one, looks, look, look at that. This one is just chilling here in the waters. Okay, so cool. You can even see some butterflies if you look up. Um, and then in here, you can see how I just played around with this, like with the... Um, foliage and you can even see that this could be like a fake lock and same goes for that one and there are some steel beams in here to hold up with the whole structure uh, but yeah I, I really like this entire build and then we've got some more snakes in here just to fill in and then also if you continue your little walk in the back there's even more there's even this one looked fantastic so I made it the way it is this is for the axolotl as you can see there's one like floating in here this weird little dude I don't even know that they swim so high, you know, in real life. I only, like, when I look at these things in real life, um, they basically are all on the ground, like, all the time. I don't even see them swimming or whatsoever. I, I think they're ground-dwelling animals. I honestly think so at this point. But yeah, so this is that. 11 minutes already in. Oh my god, that's going to be a very long video. But I really do hope you guys... Um... Yeah, that, that, that is certainly one way of doing it. I wanted to show you that there is a sneaky little backstage access, which was not meant to be used this way. Yeah, you can, you can just turn around and fix the head of this... Wait. Okay, I thought, I thought this person's gonna do the same. Anyways, let's fly up and have a look from... I wanted to say above, but it's like slightly above. But I mean, just look at that. Oh gosh, I'm so proud of this build, guys. I'm so, so proud. I hope you can actually just understand my my amazement uh, of this build. I, I spent so much time nailing this build. Um, that I can't even imagine. I wanted to do this again with like the time lapse, you know, uh, from building this thing, how it's been built. But it, there's just no way of doing this. Um, when I did this with uh, this build over here, where is it? Whoops, there you go. Um, with the sea otter habitat, this was planned from the beginning. And this time around, I, you know, my idea was building this house as best as I could. And so I, I will have a kind of time lapse thing going on for this video, but not as dedicated as the last one, which I think is totally fine. This time the, the build itself is the star of the show. And I feel like this is absolutely how it can be done sometimes as well. But I mean, look at this. Look at the reptile house itself. I think it's looking, it's looking absolutely stellar. But anyways, let me know what you think about this build. Do you like it? Uh, do you think it's a good fit for our realistic uh, habitat series? And also, we need a name for this zoo by now because it's becoming a real zoo, uh, which is starting to look really fantastic, honestly. Um, there's going to be a tutorial about filling in the gaps. We will... Um, with the tutorial, we will actually tackle this area in here, which is still pretty rubbish. And uh, people have asked for this 
for so long, so I'm gonna do this. Um, so we, we are going to make like a little habitat, uh, habitat a series on how to fill in gaps in your zoos, realistically and also functional, functioning wise. Uh, but yeah, in case you guys are um, not having this game on con uh, on PC and you're waiting for the console release, make sure to check the link in the description for Instant Gaming because you will get it for a lot, lot, lot less. Um, and make sure to pre-notify yourself uh, when it's there so you can grab it right away. Um, and I'll be doing some console content too to give you some tutorials and stuff. Uh, it's no secret that when it's there, I'm gonna grab it right away. I actually even ordered an Xbox just now so I can play it on Xbox for you guys. So be excited for that one. I'm gonna check it out, obviously. And uh, let me know in the comments what I should check out for the console. But don't worry, we will have more inspiration in, well, Planet Zoo in general in the future. So thank you so much, as always, for watching. Uh, I do appreciate all of your support. I do appreciate all of you guys being here. And um, yeah, thank you so, so much for your ongoing support. I would really love if you guys consider subscribing if you haven't already to just grow that channel and finally reach that YouTube plate. That would be lovely. But other than that, have a wonderful weekend. And I talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.